Hey guys, what's up? This is Francisco with Valariso Capital. And today I'm going to bring you the, the market update video for the week, for the coming week of February 28, 2022. And first of all, I want to say that I just wanted to wait for the futures to be open. As we can see, uh, we are already gapping down uh, somewhere around 2.3% in the, in the SPY. And we are also gapping down on the on the other indexes that we watch, which is the NQ, the RTY, and the YM. And we are going to go through them in this video as well. So it's been a pretty crazy market, right? Uh, with all the things that is ha with, with the things that are happening uh, with Ukraine and Russia and all this political uh, situation that we have right now, which is really un unfortunate. Uh, we have seen pretty intense moves in the market right a, a market that is very news driven and we have to be careful with this right we have to be careful we have to manage risk appropriately a small position sizing is 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 a good way to to handle emotions in a market like this and let's go through the charts to see what the market is trying to tell us right here so first of all let's start here with the with the ES, with this the S and P five hundred futures contracts, and we can see that we were talking about this last week, right? We we were talking how the 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 ES got rejected at a declining twenty one exponential moving average, and we were expecting this flush, right? We were watching this shelf right here, and we were expecting a flush that was probably gonna take out these lows, and that's exactly what happened. And we can see that the SPY, right, if we, mess, we make a measurement, a Fibonacci, me Fibonacci measurement from this low to this high, we actually had the 1.272, and that's exactly what the EAs, when the ES future contracts find support. We can see that we printed a, a pocket pivot volume, we right, with a very a strong closing daily bar, and then we got follow through with volume above average. So right now we're gapping down right in the in the in the after, in the in the night session and I think that a level that we want to watch is this level right here right this low right here I think is going to be a really important level for the ES to to hold in order for for the market to kind of of make a double bottom here and try to go up here into the 200 DMA Right now, as we know, anything can happen, but I think that this level right for 4,200 is going to be a really, really important level for the market. And of course, as you can see, you're yeah, right. If we just zoom, zoom out here a little bit, we can see that we actually, uh, the market, when it come down, we actually took out the, the lows from June. So basically an undercut and rally is what is going on right now in the S&P 500. So be aware of this level, right? Have your alert set for, for the 4,200 level. And then if we are able to hold that level, I think that the next part that we're going to go to is the 200 DMA. Now let's move quickly into the other, other indexes, right? We can see that the NQ, right, is actually testing this level right now, which is going to be really important, which is 13,700. And... Right, kind of the same story. We were seeing, we were talking about how these got rejected at the decline in 21 exponential moving average. And we got, right, we got the breakdown of this low and we actually moved down here. If we go to the, if we start watching this, we can see that we almost tested the lows from, from June, from May going into June. And yeah, basically, right, we also printed a, a pocket people volume day, really strong, closing bar and now we're trying to move up right so be aware of this level i think it's really important for us to hold this level which is the previous low right here and let's see if we can reclaim this 21 exponential moving average if the market is able to reclaim that that 21 exponential moving average i think there is a high probability chance that we're going to make it all the way to the 200 and the declining 50 daily moving averages now let's move into the <laughs> into the YM right here. As you can see, the YM, basically kind of the same story. We were talking about this. We were talking about the, the big volume bars that we were seeing in the selling, how this got rejected at the 50 daily moving average. And then of course we got the break of the shelf and we actually undercut these lows and then rally pretty strongly, right on pretty high volume. And I think that this level 33,200 33, is gonna be a really important level for the YM futures, which is the DIA to hold. 
So be aware of that level. I think that this is going to be a line in the sun for us to, for the market to decide if it wants to continue lower or if it actually wants to find support and then try to, to bounce into resistance right now. Now let's continue moving into the RTY, which is the IWM uh, futures contracts. And we can see that we are also gapping down 2.62% right now. This is actually, if you actually take a clear look at this, you can see that the RTY, which is the which is the IWM futures contracts, is actually outperforming the, the NASDAQ and the S&P, right? We barely take out the lows, right? We find buyers right, at, right here at this level, very, very strong a volume coming in and we actually close above that 21 exponential moving average on Friday, which I think that is really, really strong. I think that this is going to be your line in the sun for the, for the RTY. And if we are able to hold that level, I think that the next thing that we're going to do, we're probably going to, going to, going to try and we're going to probably going to try and test these, these upper level of resistance. As you can see, we're basically trading in a box. And the next step for this, for the for the RTY to to start trading a little bit more bullishly, right? We want to see that we are able to close above this level, this 2084, and basically reclaim this declining 50 daily moving average. But as for now, right, we have to be careful. We continue to trade in a box. This mar this market continues to be very volatile, and we want to make sure that the that the RTY does doesn't fail at that declining 21 exponential moving average. Now let's continue with the, this is the IWO, and right, we have to see where this is gonna open tomorrow, but we can see that we barely undercut these lows. We were, what we were talking about was the possibility of us actually testing the breakout from 2020, and we actually didn't make it quite through, through that level. And right now, as you can see, the IWO is already trading the IWO is already trading above this 21 exponential moving average. But of course, if the markets gap down tomorrow, perhaps we can see that the, perhaps the IWO most likely is going to gap down as well. But of course, keep this line, very, very important line in the sun for the markets. If we are able to hold it, to hold that level and continue to trade in a box, I think that we're going to start to see some really constructive price action. And what we want to see is this 50 DMA right, basically come down and start to flatten a little bit. We want to see price coming up, retest this level, and then perhaps we, we can continue to move higher into the next levels above. Then we we were talking about ARC, and we actually anticipated this one pretty nicely, right? We were talking about the gap that we had here, and that's exactly where the ARC found support. And now it's, it's, now it's bouncing in really high volume, and as you can see, right, ARC went all the way up, got into the distribution phase and come and came all the way down to retest this level, which is basically the breakout level from 2020. And the short interest right now in this, in this particular ETF is really high. So in my view, if the markets are able to hold those levels going into tomorrow, the levels that we are talking about, I think there's a high, high probability that we can see a short squeeze in the ARK ETF that is probably going to take us all the way to 89. But of course, we want to keep this, this, right, this 60 level, this 58 level very closely. If we break those levels on volume, I think that we could see more and more flush a more of a of a, another leg lower in the market but if we are able to hold i think there's a very high probability that we're going to see a short squeeze in the arc etf now let's continue moving into bitcoin and we were talking about this right we were talking about the bearish cross of the eight below the 21 exponential moving average and of course the bearish cross about uh, of these two exponential moving averages below the 50, the decline in 50 daily moving average. And yeah, right, we broke this trend line right here. And then we got the flush all the way down in Bitcoin. We actually found support somewhere around 34K. And right now, Bitcoin, right, is bouncing into a decline in 50 daily moving average. And now we're starting to get rejected again. Of course, as you can see, volume. I really don't pay much attention uh, to volume in Bitcoin since it's a decentralized, uh, uh, right, decentralized market. But we can see this is the volume that we can that we have in Coinbase, and of course we are just getting the 
reject it at this 50, but I think that this 34K level is going to be really, really important in Bitcoin. And of course, we want to see Bitcoin also rallying above these moving averages because it's a really important risk on, risk off kind of indicator in the market as well. Now let's continue moving into the next name, right? Let's talk a little bit about crude. And we can see that crude is gapping up right now pretty strongly. Crude is up somewhere around almost 6%. It was up somewhere around 7 to 8% just a, just a couple of minutes ago. And right, basically crude, we talk about crude, right? The higher low, the, breakdown, the, the breakout, the strong move to the upside. And what is really, really important in, in crude is that it continues to hold this, 20, this rising 21 exponential moving average. And as long as it continues to hold that rising 21 exponential moving average, I think that we have to, to respect the trend and assume that we will continue to see higher prices in crude. But of course, these are really, really, really uh, strong candles, selling candle to the downside, right? We can see the volume was over 100% above average volume. And we can see that it, they basically closed it all the way down. So if this that we're seeing right now is actually a bull trap, I think that we can see crude coming down pretty quickly to test this breakout level and test the 50 daily moving average, which I consider will be a really interesting and great way to get long crude with a solid risk reward ratio at those levels. But we will have to see, right? We basically pick somewhere around this uh, 1.618, which was the measurement from this level to this level, and that was the extension. But we really aware of this. My gut is telling me that probably this is gonna be a bull trap and that we're probably gonna retest these levels somewhere around here, somewhere around 85 before crude decides where it wants to go next. Now let's go into gold. And what I'm actually seeing in gold, right? We got a really strong volume, really, really strong move, right? A lot of volume, but of course, as you can see, right? Let me just zoom here a little bit. As you can see, right? We, ha we had a lot, a lot of volume, but of course they basically closed gold all the way down here. So it was rejected at this level up here, which is the 1960 level. So what is happening in gold, right? Is a, in my opinion, gold is a pretty tough market, right? We, we have crazy moves all the time, but this was a really solid breakout. And in my opinion, for what I'm seeing in gold, after getting rejected there, I think there is a chance that gold is gonna come here and is, and is gonna retest this level before doing anything else. If this happens to be a bull trap and then and we see equities going up, I think that gold is probably gonna fail this breakout and it's gonna come down pretty, pretty quickly. But of course, we will let price action to tell us what it wants to do. But for now, as long as, as gold is unable to take out this level, I think there's a high, high probability that gold is gonna fail this breakout, move down, and then equities are gonna move up. But we will have to see. Now let's move into the into the 10 year, into the 10 year yields, and we can see that they're gapping down right now. Uh, we continue to be above the breakout levels, right? We will continue we continue to be above a uh, 1.90%. And by seeing, right, by watching at the at the 10 year here, by watching at the 10 year here, right, the, the possibility that we will continue to see this going up is there, right? We continue to be basically above this rising 21 exponential moving average. But of course, as, as, as we can see, we got below it, we're finding resistance above those levels. So let's see if this actually wants to test the 50 and perhaps going and perhaps go down and the market will have some, some relief to move in the other direction and move up. Let's check, let's check bonds here. And basically bonds, right, they're gonna move opposite to the yields. And what I'm seeing in, 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 in bonds actually, right, we can see that we got rejected at this 21 exponential moving average. We have been trading below it for a while. We tried to went up above it. We got sold on pretty heavy volume, tried again, a rejected in pretty heavy volume. Try it again. You can see that we basically close at the lows on pretty heavy volume. And right now we're gapping above it, right? So we have to see what the market, what, what the marketing bonds want to do. But if we continue to trade above this level, right? We can see that this 153 level is a really important level. I think that we can actually see kind of a squeezing bonds and that will bring the yields to the downside. And I think that would actually help the market to move to the upside. But we have to see, 
let's let's see if the if the bonds are able to to keep to protect this 153 level so that so that the so that we can see those yields come down and then we can see bonds move to the upside but i think this is really constructive in bonds right we can see kind of the price action here i think this is actually pretty pretty constructive and if we can hold this 21 exponential moving average i think there's a really high probability of us moving higher in this market now let's go into some of the sentiment indicators that i watch and um, first of all here i have the put call ratio we saw a pretty high high put call ratio on, on thursday as soon as the market as soon as the market opened we saw that we rallied pretty pretty hard and right now the put call ratio continues to be pretty elevated right it, we close on friday at 0 0.82 and that's actually showing us that there is a lot of fear in the market still and as you guys who follow me I use the the 10 day daily moving average and as soon as the 10 day daily moving average starts to get above 0 0.90 that's usually when there's a lot of fear in the market if this 10 day moving average continues to to move above into one I will consider that in my book a very strong buy signal but of course we have to take always a look at price action but this is actually pretty constructive this is actually moving in the in the right direction for the bulls as sentiment continues to get bearish every single day now let's move into the into the into the spreads right these are the 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 bond spreads and basically what this is telling us right uh, we were watching for this to get above 151 and that will actually we were we were we were watching that because if these spreads start to widen that means that investors are are willing to take less risk in equities and this is actually getting rejected which is actually pretty bullish and if we can actually take that take out this 1.48 level i think that, that we can see a pretty sustained rally in the markets but of course we have to take it day by day and for now these spreads are basically just trading in a range but as long as we continue to trade below this 151 level i think that's actually pretty constructive for the bulls now let's move into the mfi which is the percentage of stocks that are trading above their 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 50 daily moving average we can see that we came somewhere around 20 percent right now we're somewhere around 40. we usually when we get somewhere around this 10 to 5 percent that's usually a really strong buy signal as we can see that the market is pretty pretty oversold but we continue to make lower highs and lower lows right lower lows and lower highs and right we don't have to get to this level for the market to rally right that doesn't need to happen but if we actually get to this level that's a pretty pretty strong buy signal but this continues to be in basically in no man's land so nothing to tell us here in the mfi if we move to the skew right as we mentioned the skew uh, hedge funds start to hedge start to to hedge uh, when we are somewhere above 145 to 150 basically means that the premiums in the puts in the options market are pretty high and that usually signals that the that the that the hedge funds are hedging and right now we were moving in the right direction right we were moving down to 120 115 and that's usually uh, when there is not when the hedge funds don't see too much of a risk coming into the future and of course it takes months to play out but we were actually moving in the right direction let's continue to see what the skew tell us going into this week but for now this is basically just in no man's land as well now let's move quickly into the VIX. and the actually what we have in the VIX was pretty constructive right we were talking about this how the VIX was breaking out of this flag we were trending about the 21 exponential moving average we had the squeeze we had the buy signal and actually we got the move that we were expecting to right we got that extension into the plus 380 ATR level we can sometimes we extend all the way to four to plus 4 ATR but plus 3 ATR is usually enough fear in the market and now we're getting a sell signal with some exhaustion exhaustion signals as well but I'm looking for the bigs to trade below this this 21 exponential moving average to trade below 25 to get more of a confirmation that the market actually wants to move up so keep this in, keep this in your radar I think that as long as the VIX uh, don't trade too much above 32 I think that we are in a good shape for perhaps a rally going into the first weeks of March so as you can see guys 
Uh, this was my review. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.